Kevin Jones-esque, honestly. You got wild slashes, lightning strikes, the three dig-through times stand out, as do the three copies of Valor's Dance, two anticipates, four stoke the flames as well. So we'll see what Pat Node can do here. He beat Tom in the finals last week, and we'll see if he can beat him here and make top eight. And this is a more typical, smaller version of Jeskai Aggro as opposed to Kevin Jones's list, which is going very big in the main deck this weekend. The boss has a Temple of Enlightenment. Top card goes to the bottom. His round number 14 is underway. Pat knows he's going to sacrifice his Flooded Strand, get himself a Plains. We'll see what he has for turn number two. The boss is looking to make another top eight here on the Open Series. As Pat will take a draw. It is a Seeker of the way. There's a Battlefield Forge. There's a Seeker past that turn back. So two Seekers were in hand as we go to Tom. Seeker, very, very important against decks like Ban Heroic. You need to get out on the front foot and start pressuring them to force them to tap out for their plays. And life gain, very important for this matchup that often just plays out like a straight damage race. Ravel Master, also very important from the Jeskai Agro side of the table. Ban Heroic's not really killing stuff, so cards that have a huge swing on the damage race, like Seeker of the Way, like Goblin Ravel Master, are very potent in the matchup. And there's a Plains. And now there's a Hero of Heroes. So we'll see if Patno doesn't have an answer to this. Does Nicholas Juan tap and take a draw? It's an island. We'll see if there's a Mantis Rider maybe coming. I mean, between the deck list and these basics. <laughs> You're having a tough time. <laughs> yeah. I am struggling I with understand. this one. I understand. I <laughs> understand. Here's a Goblin <laughs> Rabble Master. Stay tough. Goblin. I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to weather the storm here. Goblin Token coming in as well, of course, from the Rabble Master. We'll see how Tom wants to block. He can block the Seeker and trade with it, or he can block that Goblin Token and get that off the table. And with Dromoka's command here, I think he's going to keep his creature in play here. And we're going to see the same sequence we've seen a couple times now of... Tromoka's command being excellent here. Get the ball rolling on one of his big threats, and with a Ortiel Thas up the top, this could be a great turn. And Tom does have green mana there in Mana Confluence. And this could be a filthy turn. Okay. Tom, gonna move a little bit slower here. As we talked about last round, some uncharacter mis uncharacteristic missteps from Tom this weekend. There's an Ordeal of Elia and Ordeal Thassa. Well, this is pretty straightforward and easy. Sure, this is fine too. Counter. Appeal to. Nothing wrong with this turn. No, not at all. Counter, gain 10. Don't mind me. Just got myself a 6-6 six, six out here. If you don't have a Valor stance, Mr. Pat Node, you better draw one. And hope that Tom doesn't have a God's Willing. And most of these decks have moved away from being able to answer a creature this large game one. A couple copies of Valor stance usually hang out in the main deck three in Pat Nose's list, which is a, a fair bit. It's on the, the larger side of that card. And, and he has one in the grip. Very important here. I mean, it's still, it still has to resolve, but this is true. No copies of Jeskai Charm in these decks anymore. That used to be the other way to get out of a spot like this. And they've all really moved away from that card. Yep. It's pretty inefficient. The only reason to really have in the deck game one is to shore up your vulnerability to big creatures, and Valor Stance handles that. Now, Valor Stance is going to try to handle that mm. here by Rose, but God's Willing says absolutely not. So Tom will get the opportunity to scry. Can't forget they triggered Heroic as well. So now Hero of Rose is a 7-7. Seven, seven. So impressive to break serve in this matchup, too. Normally the person on the play has a pretty big advantage given how swinging the matchup is and how much it is about getting one of your threats to stick and not tapping it within play. Ross will leave that card on top. Pat, it's coming in the red zone with all his creatures. Can't forget the Seeker the way did trigger its prowess, so a little bit of lifelink action here for Nicholas, so long as he did remember it. Now we go back to Boss's way. Tom will draw a copy of Aqueous for him. Life total is 19 to 15 in favor of the Boss. Manic influences the land. No shortage of good options in Tom's hand here. Favorite Hoplite with the Dromoka's Command. We've seen that come up. Nakwe's form in hand. Probably doesn't want to cast it this turn. I guess as a concession of mana efficiency, he's going to do that. Yeah, he's coming in. A little scry action here. Top card very quickly goes to the bottom. Not like what he saw. Follow up. Favorite Hoplite with the ability to leave up Dromoka's Command. Pretty good turn here for Rose. Those two cards are a combo, by the way. Yeah, they're really nice together. 
really, really nice together. Oh, did you attack with several creatures? Wrong. You're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> just a huge error there. Yep. Should have just not attacked for the entire game. Right. Tom wins or loses this match, makes the top eight, whatever. Jeroka's pants legit in this time. Yep. I w am immediately sold. And the mana fixing that's available to these three colors so naturally facilitates it, too. Because it's Windswept Heat's great, and Mana Confluence is a card you want to play anyway. You saw a Seeker of the Way pre-combat. Now here is a Stoke the Flames, which Dravoka's Command happens to be really good against, too. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is... This is a choose-your-own-adventure with no bad selections. Yeah. Tom gets to decide whether he wants to just fight and respawns. Does he grow his creature? Does he prevent all damage from the Stoke of the Flames? Just a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Yeah. How bad do I get to ruin you with this card? You choose. You sh <laughs> Two of the three modes cannot be defeated here on their own. Yeah. Excuse me. Three of the four modes, rather, cannot be defeated on their own, and Tom gets two of yeah, them. Yeah, Nick is just going to concede the game right now, knowing yep. that he <laughs> is beat. Jamoka's <laughs> command has ruined him, and Tom Ross is going to win game number one here over Nicholas Patnode. Van Heroic up a game here against Jessica Agro in the finals rematch of our Legacy Premier IQ last weekend. And winning game one on the draw, very challenging in this kind of matchup, and, and Patnode with a great draw there. Secret and Rabble Master uh, with a Valorous stance. That's kind of the recipe you're looking for, but Tom able to beat it. I think you'd ask for that every time. Yeah, exactly. That's that's one of Nicholas's best draws in the matchup, and it was not enough. Well, we'll look at Pat Note's sideboard. He's boarding in a lot of cards, as you can tell. Seismic Rupture, one Obs on Advantage, two Negates, one Erase, three Disdainful Stroke, two Anger of the Gods, a Glare of Heresy, two Elspeth Sun's Champion, and two Bermaz, King of Arescos are the options. I imagine Nicholas tries to go big here with a lot of sweepers. I like bringing in his copies of Ramaz, Glare of Heresy, Elspeth, the Anger of the Gods, and his two copies of Negate as well. What do we see on the boss's side? Two Monastery Mentor, Lugubon, Trailblazer, two copies of Encase and Ice, two Ordeal of Heliod, a Temple of Enlightenment, two copies of Treasure Cruise, four Stubborn Denial, and Ajani's Presence. Some very solid options here. I think you're going to see the Ajani's Presence, the two additional copies of Treasure Cruise, the four Stubborn Denials, and we've seen the Monastery Mentors come in all of his post-board games thus far. I think the additional Trailblazer against a red deck also seems solid to me. Well, these players are going to sideboard up, get ready here for game number two. Nicholas Patton will be on the play. We'll talk about our spring sale that's taking place at Star City Games right now. Pretty straightforward stuff, honestly. Every day at 11 a.m., we add something new, a new item. So you go to the website, you bookmark this thing. Every day you refresh your page at 11 a.m., you can check out new articles, check out new sales. And you've seen this recipe before, whether it's our back to school sale, whether it's our winter holiday sale. We've done this before. A lot of staple constructed cards go on sale regularly, so it's worth checking out. Boxes, product. We don't tell you what it is. It's just a big surprise. Make sure you check it out every day. And you're going to the website anyway to read all the content. So right? might as well just go browse it. I agree with Patrick. New items added at 11 a.m. East Coast time, Monday through Friday. StarCityGames.com, our spring sale. Check it out. You can even go right now. Yeah, just hop on in. Feel go free. check it out. Game number two between Tom Ross, Nicholas Patnode. Jamoka's Command. Get them now. I don't know if they're on sale. Get them now. Card's legit. That card is legit. I'm guessing it's a seller's market right now. I think so. I don't know if that's the... Take a look at the commands. It's like there's Jamokas. We saw Ojutais this week. and haven't seen much of Salumgars. We have a lot of red-green aggro in the tournament, and that's basically an Atarka's command deck. Yeah. So I imagine uh, that's, shown up, that's certainly shown up in those decks. Yep. So uh, what's really impressive to me is Jamokas command in Obzon aggro, it fits right in. Super good card. But it feels like that slot could be replaced by a number of different things. You know, if, if your Dramokas commands or Bioblights or Ultimate Prices or whatever, uh, it's about the same thing. Dramokas command might be better than those cards, but it's not that far away from other options. For the Heroic deck, this feels like it's doing something that you can't get from any other card. That's what's so nice about it. It's a way to interact with the board in a way that also facilitates Heroic. And because game one, this deck needs to be all in on its Heroic linear strategy, you can't really play removal. Also, blue and white don't really lend themselves to having a lot of removal cards to begin with. Well, that card, Jamoka's Man in combination with Favorite Hoplite is silly. Yeah, that, that, is, that is so good. It's absolutely silly. It was something where the full implications of it were not obvious to me until I was watching Tom play. And when I've been watching Tom play and he has those two cards in hand, I'm thinking, how is his opponent ever supposed to attack? Yeah, he really he, can't. He loses everything in combat if he makes a move on the ground. We saw the destruction of Deathmiss Raptors. Those that have Death Touch. 
Yep. You would think that, okay, well, at least these are safe. They're nope. all dead. Yep, they're gone. <laughs> they're all dead. It is a heck of a combination Gone of and never to return because Tom's killing you then in two turns. That's also true because his creatures are huge now. Might be the perfect fit. Tom going to take a mulligan. Going to go down to six. Pat Doan has kept his seven. He's on the play. And Nicholas, last game, got off to a great start. Can do the same again here. He's already kept his seven. And we put a lot of the attention on Tom, given his resume. But we can't forget that Pat no last weekend beat him in the finals of Legacy from IQ. Tom playing Infect, Nicholas playing Reanimator last weekend. I imagine that's one of Infect's more challenging matchups. Absolutely. Ellis Norn is You're trouble. dead. <laughs> it is trouble. You're dead. You and your friends are dead. <laughs> Do you know who you're messing with? <laughs> Here's a seeker of the way, Batman. <laughs> He'll get a planes. Tom will take a draw. He'll sacrifice a Flooded Strand himself. You get a Plains. Claire of Heresy, Manus Rider in Nicholas's hand. Looks like another solid start. Judge here of Heros. Let's go Pat Nose way. Negate the draw. Temple of Epiphany, the play. Top card goes to the bottom. Wild Slash is nice here. Let's Pat no attack for three and gain three life as well. This is a great start. Such a big deal, too, because cards like Wild Slash, they have moments of being very good against Heroic, but they fall off a cliff very quickly. Tom can play something like a Trailblazer, which can't be Wild Slash, or he just starts growing one of his two twos, and Wild Slash does very little for the rest of the game. So being able to trade your Wild Slash this early on, keep the Glare of Heresy in your hand, uh, that's a very important exchange for Nicholas. There's another hero. Pass the turn back over to Pat Nove. He'll play a temple, take a look at that top card. Leave it on top. He'll go with a Mantis Rider. Go into the sky, Seeker of the Way, gonna hang out on D. But Pat Nove's start here is absolutely beautiful. And his hand is good too. He's got Negate and Glare of Heresy over there. Yep, so he's likely to be able to win a fight over a large creature down the road. Those two cards in tandem should be good enough. Tom needs a very good hand to fight through that. Well, he's doing that thing that's scary now, sitting up in his chair, analyzing some things. Looking to get to work. Gonna start by sacrificing a flooded strand. Islander planes coming. Sometimes I wonder in spots like that if Nicholas is supposed to offer up the secret of the way on the attack the previous turn. Divine Strike's really bad. You lose your card for nothing. But the other likely trick in that spot is God's Willing. You trade your secret of the way with a God's Willing, you're probably pretty stoked. Especially, I, I wouldn't hate that. Especially with a glare and a gate in your hand, so you don't worry about the creature getting out of control. It's a risky attack, but sometimes I wonder if you're just supposed to do things like that against Heroic. Seeker or deal, trigger, mana confluence, beatdowns, trigger. Four damage coming across. And Nicholas has got to love that with the with the glare and the gate in his hand. Gets to have a really good turn here. Stoke the flames to draw too. There's a glare. God's willing will be countered by negate. That means Tom is going to lose his Hero Viros and his Ordeal, and now here are the attacks. Can't forget that Nicholas' Seeker now is a 4-4 four, four with Lifeline. And the last two cards in Nicholas' hand, Stoke the Flames, Manus Rider. Pretty close to a perfect holding. Yep. All lined up pretty nice here. Yeah, this is, a, this is another great draw here from Nicholas. And this time, Ross not in a position to, to fight back since Nicholas is armed when negates post board and then can win the fight over... God's Willing and similar cards. There's a Seeker. Excuse me, there's a Hero of Rose. Pass the turn back. Pat Node with a Flooded Strand. He'll play that. He'll sacrifice that. Go down to 21. I think we're going to see a Mantis Rider here in just a moment. There's an Island. 
sometimes you just get your butt kicked. Yep. Tom got his butt kicked this game. That is going to do it there. Stoke the Flames in, in reserve as well. Nicholas Patno going to tie it up here against Tom Ross. They're going to play a third one, just like they did last weekend in the finals of that Legacy Premier IQ. A touch too much. It's a beatdown. That's yep. all that was. Uh, great curve there from Nicholas, and just enough answers to fend off Tom's response. That's how you draw it up. Well, we're shuffling up here for game number three. Winter is just about over. You know, there's a little bit of snow here in Syracuse. They're still melting away. We got some snow last night while we were walking to go get some food. We yeah, also we got did. some snow earlier in the day. So it's not spring everywhere just yet. Light dustings, but yeah, there are some mounds of snow that are still melting here in Syracuse. So I suppose we can talk about our winter creature collection. Let me how you see it right here in front of us. The mammoth, the rat, the wolf, and the eternal witness. These are all available on card sleeves, play mats, and dice bags. You can head over to starcitygames.com slash creature collection, get your items today, or head over to the dealer booth at any open series or Grand Prix that we're vending at. I think we'll have a, uh, a spring collection soon. Well, we already have our roster. We, we do. don't know what the, what the swing character will be. We don't know what our a turtle witness equivalent will be. We've but got our cat. Kitten. S excuse me. We have our kitten, our bee. Mm-hmm. Our bunny. Yep. And then the swing character. The pun, we don't know. Not yet. Perhaps it's a hip hop apotamus. Hip hop apotamus? Yeah. His lyrics are bottomless. No? Don't know it? I'm trying to think of some other ones. What about a, a legacy loving, a fetch land loving creature called the Shuffle Upagus? No. Could you get behind that? <laughs> no, I can't. Just a, just a big snuffle upagus that loves shuffling cards. <laughs> You need to watch more Flight of the Concords, man. <laughs> that, that one just went so far over your head, I'm actually disappointed. Sorry, man. Sorry. I, was always, I was already brewing up the shuffle up, I guess, which I really, <laughs> sure. I'm really enamored just with. Just ignoring everything I'm even saying. It's like I'm not even here. I mean, that's a, that's a bigger conversation. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, grown, I've grown used to it, trust me. I know I'm just talking to myself in yeah. here. It's fine. The shuffle up against looking at a breeding pool in a Hall of Fountain, trying to decide which one it wants to go put into play. Well, shouldn't it be looking at fetch lands if you're going to do this? Well, so the fetch land's already grave in the graveyard. The oh, flooded strand or okay. whatever is already in the okay. graveyard. I need the arc description. Right. That's what I need right now. Just so happy to be shuffling things around. I like shuffling. Shuffling over to the table, <laughs> then shuffling his deck. Shuffling the opponent's deck. Shuffling the opponent's deck is great. Every tournament could use a shuffle up against. Yep. Hanging out with Soldier of Fortune, just shuffling people's decks. Best friend. <laughs> they are best friends. Ross will be on the play. Both players are going to take a look at seven cards here. Third and final game between these two. Tom's keeping. So is Nicholas. We're underway here in game number three. Just a Plains for the boss, Mystic Monastery for Patno. Got a confluence in Tom's hand, so mana should be good to go. That color's not an issue. There's a Plains. There's a Seeker of the Way. Pass that turn back over to Patno, who will draw. And just like we saw last game, an opportunity for Nicholas to cash in a Wild Slash in a good spot. He'll do just that. Got to take those spots. Yep. Saw a match yesterday that Tom played against Chase Kovac. Chase tried to develop his board instead of using a wild slash while Tom was tapped out, and uh, that was essentially where the game ended. Lightning strike, a nice draw here for Pat. No, we'll see if he wants to cast it right now or not. With the God's Willing looming, he's going to cast Lightning Strike. Doesn't seem thrilled about it. Does Tom have God's Willing? He does not. Ross will draw. Picked up God's Willing this turn. There's a third heroic threat in Hero Heroes. Tom will pass. Does have Ordeal of Thoughts in hand, but not willing to cast it right now. Yeah, he had an opportunity to do it there in a spot where he doesn't have to worry about Wild Slash and response. Nicholas was only a flooded strain up. Now, Patno does have Stoke the Flames he can cast right now. 
but casting Stoke against Tom with a bunch of mana up is way less attractive than casting Wild Slash against nothing or Lightning Strike against one mana. I have to agree. But the other side of it is that Tom did not show the ability to interact last time. So if he didn't have God's Willing last turn, maybe he doesn't have it this turn. It's possible. Russell Jerome, Battlewise Hoplite. He'll take one to play this ordeal of Thassa. That'll trigger Heroic. We'll see if he'd like to get in the red zone here. And he will. He says, Nicholas says, one moment, please. I'd like to sacrifice this flooded strand. So we're about to see Ob's on advantage here. And this is a card. It's a hit or a miss against Heroic. There's some spots where it's pretty solid. You can get the ordeal before it gets out of control. But uh, the enchantments don't often stay in play very long. So you can easily get caught with this in your hand and, and nothing to do with it. Now, there's a neat interaction here with Ob's on advantage where Petno gets the bolster and he gets a trigger prowess. And he's making Tom sacrifice an enchantment, which is the ordeal. But Tom gets to draw two cards because with Ordeal of Thassa, it says when it is sacrificed, you peel too. It has a very odd wording here. When you sacrifice Ordeal of Thassa, draw two cards. And there's a line break there in between that and the second paragraph of text which means that it's not predicated on the sacrifice that's related to attacking. It just means when you sacrifice it. Which he just did. Potential cyborg card against Emrakul. Lose all your permanents, get two cards on the way out. Very nice. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> this spot, you know, a little bit more likely to come up. This is also something, interesting enough, that Tom can do himself with Dromoka's command. That's correct. Target player sacrifices enchantment, so... He can just make that happen. Pat, no, not interesting in not interested. Excuse me, in blocking. Now the question is, Tom want to deploy this? He will deploy Battlewise Hoplite. Has God's willing at the ready. Just continuing to build a board and pass the turn back over to Patnode. Patnode will draw. His hand is a pretty good one. Stoke the Flames, Mantis Rider. Adds another copy of Mantis Rider to it. Well, this is a this is a tough spot, and Jeskai Agro gets into the spot a little bit when it starts falling behind Heroic, where if it's casting creatures, you're setting up for a damage race, and if you're casting spells, you're risking your entire turn being spent on something that gets swallowed up by God's willing or a similar effect. Patnode getting aggressive now. Tom going to block. That means we'll see God's willing defensively. Basically saying, Nicholas, I don't think you have anything. Trigger heroic. Makes sense. I mean, if there was a wild slash in Nicholas's hand, you probably would have seen it last turn in response to the ordeal of Thassa. I think so. Tom gets to scry twice there. One from the heroic on Battle White Hoplite, the other from the God's willing. Put one to the bottom, second one on top, so he's happy, happy with what he's going to be drawing. We'll find out what that is in just a moment. Looks like it was a defiant strike. Tom's also just aware that this game is going to be played on a very short timeline, and it's time to take some risks. Jeroka's command. Hoofa. Yeah, this is, this is nasty. This card does so much. Another interesting synergy here is target creature you control, fight target creature you don't control, and put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature means that he can split this, like in the spot, and get a token on each of his creatures. This card is, this card is so silly in this deck. Yeah. As a heroic enabler, it's doing a lot. Yep. An absolute beatdown. Every time he's cast Remoka's command, it's been like, oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two stoke the flames and dig through time and a Mantis Strider. I don't think any of those are going to be good enough here for Nicholas. Hero of Arose has got five toughness. Battlewise Hoplite, sure, he can waste his turn killing that, but Tom also has a God's Willing in hand right now, Stubborn too. Stubborn Denial as well. Dig through time? Nope. That's been denied. And that's an extension of the hand. Tom Ross going to get a little bit of revenge here against Nicholas Patno. Going to win this match two games to one. Bat Heroic will take care of Jess Gaiagro. Patno got him in the finals last weekend in the Legacy Premier IQ. Ross gets him here. Might send him to the top eight in Syracuse. I'll tell you what, Tom's deck is nice. Very